Hey guys, Laura Whitmore here with STP. As a test prep coach with over 17 years experience, I am constantly analyzing SAT tests for current trends. And in this video today, I'm gonna to cover eight problems that I am confident will show up on the March SAT. So I will show you tips and strategies for tackling each one. Before we get started though, please comment below and let me know how you've been studying for this March test and what your goal score is. Before we get into today's problems, this video is brought to you by Preply, the digital SAT prep app that's available in the App Store and in Google Play, and is helping hundreds of students worldwide improve their SAT scores immensely. If you don't feel like taking a full test practice every time you sit down to prep, Preply is the perfect alternative. It's a daily practice app where you can practice as much or as little as you want. Prep from the convenience of your mobile device while you're out and about. You don't have to be tied down to a computer like if you're working out of Blue Book exams or College Board's question bank. We have over a thousand exclusive questions that mimic those on the digital SAT in both English and math. The best part is the answer explanations are easy to understand and give you practical tips unlike College Board. No offense, College Board. So if you're gearing up to take the March test, go to the App Store or Google Play and download Preply now to take your prep to the next level. All right, guys, my first prediction for the March SAT deals with seemingly simple linear equations or linear inequalities, but they're really not so simple. So as you can see, I have a problem here. And the thing I want you to know is that it's problem number 21. That is saying basically that it's gonna be a more difficult problem than meets the eye because it's towards the end of the module. There's only 22 questions in each math module. So the higher up you go, the more difficult it's going to get. So when we look at this problem, it says uh, window repair specialist charges 220 for the first two hours of repair plus an hourly fee for each additional hour. The total cost for five hours of repair is $400, which function F gives the total cost in dollars for hours of repair. Now, the last thing you wanna do is pick an answer choice that shows the y-intercept is 220, because that's what they want you to do. But again, this is a difficult problem and there's more to it than meets the eye. First of all, $220 was for two hours, not one, and it's number 21, so we need to think this through. Well, what I have for you guys is an awesome, very practical strategy that you can use on these problems. And essentially, all you need to do is work or plug in values. So they said five hours of repair is $400. Okay, I'm gonna put five in for X and I'm gonna put 400 in for Y until one of the equations works. So let's take a look at A. I've got 60 times five plus 100. That would be 300 plus 100, which is $400. Ding, 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 the answer is A. Now, you might not be able to tell where this stuff is coming from. Like, why the 100 Y intercept? You know, where's the 60? That's okay, don't worry about it. You've solved it, you're good to go. One thing I should note though is in C, that could also work because if you put in five, you will also get 400, but you have to recognize that there is going to be a flat rate. So there's no way it's just a slope because they charge a certain amount for the first two hours that is separate from the hourly fee. So you will have a flat rate involved. So you should get rid of C right away. Even if it works when you put in the values five, 400, don't pick C, it looks different than the others. And again, you need a Y-intercept. All right, my second prediction deals with subject verb agreement. So we all love those grammar questions, right guys? Here's a case where you have different verbs, hasn't, wasn't, isn't, aren't, okay? So what we can use is we can use the pronoun trick and figure out the one that's different, which one's singular or plural. So you want the different one. Okay, so I would say he hasn't been, he wasn't, he isn't, but I would say they aren't. I wouldn't say he aren't. So chances are the answer is D. 
you could probably confidently move on just using that strategy. But if you want to be sure, then what you can do is go into the problem and look for the subject. So it says the artistic talents of Barbara Chase Rabode, most known for her 1979 historical novel, Sally Hemings and the conversation that expired. Well, that inspired that stuff in between those two commas is not essential. It's just describing more about the artistic talents of Barbara Chase Rabode is also extra information. Our subject is artistic talents. So if you see up clauses, if you see stuff in between two commas, cross it all off. Artistic talents is plural, so we need a plural verb, aren't. All right, guys, if you're finding this video helpful so far, make sure you smash the subscribe button and notification bell below because I come out with useful SAT videos every single week to help you hit your goals. All right, my third prediction is a trig prediction. College Board is in love with the complementary angles rule, you guys. So chances are, if you see something with sine and cosine in it, that's what they're testing you on. So as you can see in this number six, they talk about sine and then they want cosine, okay? If they say it's a right triangle RST, that means angle R and angle S are gonna be complementary angles. They're gonna add to 90 degrees. So because of the complementary angles rule, if two angles are complementary, that basically means the sine of one of them will equal the cosine of the other one. So if they say that the sine of R is radical 15 over four, I'm gonna pick the same thing for the cosine of S. It will also be radical 15 over four. Sometimes what College Board will do is they'll ask you for the sine of R minus the cosine of S. If that's the case where they're subtracting the sine from the cosine, pick an answer that says zero, because since they're the same amount, if you take one away from the other, you'll have nothing. All right, my next prediction, which is prediction number four, deals with no solution or infinitely many solution equations. I put up here a no solution equation. Now, many of you, when you look at this problem, might automatically think to use Desmos. Let me walk it back here. Desmos is not the best way to go about this. It's much easier than that. Because remember, for a no solution, let me give you another example. You want your coefficients to be the same and your constants to be different. So see how I have the coefficients exactly the same on either side? That means when you go to combine them or combine like terms, the X's disappear and four doesn't equal negative seven. So if they're telling me that there's no solution to this, I want the X's on this side to match the X's on the other side. So I just need to think, okay, what does K have to be so that when I multiply it by three, I get 48 over 17, okay? And I just know that K needs to be 16 17 because three times 16 will get me 48 and then we'll keep the 17 on the bottom. So the answer is gonna be 16 17 You're done, easier than putting it into Desmos in my opinion. All right guys, if you're finding this video helpful so far, make sure to show me some love and hit that like button below. All right, my fifth prediction deals with tricky percentage problems. So you will have on your test a English phrase that you need to translate into a math equation in order to solve it. So when they say what percentage, that means you don't know it, that'll be your X. Of means multiply, 300 obviously is 300. Is means equals 75. So in other words, you can rewrite that equation to say 300X equals 75, and then quickly and easily solve that without making a mistake. So when you do 75 divided by 300, you're looking at 25%, which is A. All right, my sixth prediction is you will have words and context questions on your test. Duh, of course they're gonna have words and context questions on your test. They're gonna be at the beginning of both the first module and the second module of English. But this is more showing you how to do it because I'm hearing a lot of you say that you're getting stuck, you don't know the words, you keep getting these wrong. So let's just talk strategies here, okay? Like. What are your strategies for words and context? I'm gonna list them out for you guys. The first thing you could do is find the definition 
or a synonym to the word we need in the blank. The second thing you can do is you can play positive negative. And the third thing you can do is you can break a word down into its parts. which is basically linguistics. We have Greek roots, we have Latin roots. The roots have meanings. You can figure out what a word means based on its parts. So let's look at this one together um, and I'll kind of walk through how you could use some strategies here. So Seminole Muskegee director Sterling Harjo blank television's tendency to situate native characters in the distant past. This rejection is evident in his series. Okay, first, we have a special punctuation mark, which is a colon. Typically, the definition or synonym for the word in the blank comes immediately after these unique punctuation marks. And I see this compression pronoun, this rejection. So I know that that's a synonym for what we need in the blank. So that being said, I know I need a negative word. I'm gonna play positive negative with the answer choices. So I just use number one and I'm using number two to help me figure this out. When I look at the answer choices, pro is a positive prefix, so I know it's not per claims. Foretells sounds like a neutral word to me, so I'm not gonna pick that. So now I'm down to repudiates and recants, which both sound negative. How am I gonna pick the correct one that fits here? Well, this is a point where I can break a word down into its parts to try to come up with its meaning. Now, can't, I recognize from the word incantation. And I know that that's like, um, like a chanting or like a singing type deal. And actually can't is the root for like singing or chanting. So I know that that's irrelevant to this and it doesn't sound as negative as A too. So I'm gonna go with A. So that's what you do if you don't know what the words mean. Now, obviously I'm an SAT tutor, so I kind of did know what the words mean, but just play along with me. I wanna show you what happens when you get stuck because there's a very good chance you're gonna get stuck on a words and context question. This is how you're gonna handle it. Okay, prediction number seven. They're gonna throw at you a tricky problem where you have to differentiate between it being linear versus exponential. This is what most students do, guys, when they get to this problem. They see percentage and they go, oh, exponential. And then they pick C and they move on and they get it wrong. Now, let's look at the number to the problem, guys. What number are we on? Are we on one, two, three, or four? No. It's not gonna be that easy of a problem. This is gonna be a harder problem because you're on number 19. Things are not what they seem when you get to the higher level problems. So the first thing you want to do, and it goes back to the one problem that I already covered on percentages, translate that English phrase into an equation. So f of x equals, well, how do I write 201% so that I can do math on it? I'm going to turn it into a decimal. So that would be 2.01 of means multiply x. So I'll put the x right next to it because that's multiplying. Now look at it. Does that look exponential? It sure doesn't. That is linear with a slope of 2.01. So you have to pick D increasing linear. So be very careful with those. They're gonna try to trip you up with that. All right, my last prediction is dealing with a system of equations. Guys, this is a great time to use Desmos. And there are other great times to use Desmos too. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of valuable opportunities where Desmos is a lot easier. This is one of them. So if they give you a system of equations or system of inequalities, I immediately want you to go plug this thing into Desmos and look at it. So let's do that. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to desmos.com and then I'm just gonna type those two equations in just the way that they showed them on the test. So we've got x squared plus two x plus one. Now keep in mind, you're gonna have a built-in Desmos calculator in Blue Book exams. I'm not using that one right now. I'm just going right to Desmos. But look at this. They were asking, what are the, what's the value of y1 plus y2? So they want the two, they want the two solutions. They want us to sum up the y values. So when we go back to Desmos, we just need to look at the two points. Look at that. I've got a solution at negative two, one. So my first y value is one. I've got another solution at negative one, zero. So my second y value is zero. 
So literally all I need to do is one plus zero and I get one and I'm done. That's a great way to save some time, you guys, so that you can go back to problems you were stuck on, you can go back and check your work to catch careless mistakes. So use Desmos anytime you see a system and I promise you can't go wrong. All right guys, that's it for this video. Those are my predictions for the March SAT. So look out for all of those. If you made it to the end of this video with me, go ahead and throw a shamrock in the comments below because it's St. Patty's Day right around the corner and I'm hoping you will have a little bit of luck of the Irish when you go into your test. Until next time guys, happy prepping.